Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. After such a beautiful talk, I think I, I want to move to live with Mr. Yu. <laughs> so, um, but right now what I have to do is just to present our work, the work of Ecosistema Urbano. Urban social design, we are a Madrid-based group of architects and urban designers operating within the fields of urbanism, architecture, engineering, and sociology. And we define our approach, as you can see there, as urban social design, and by which we understand the design of environment, the spaces, dynamics, and tools in order to improve self-organization of citizens, social interaction with, within communities, and their relationship with the environment. Okay? And why? Why is that urban design and with the word social in between? It's because we really think the city has to be designed from that part, from those very first two meters in which all the social interactions happen, where people meet each other. That, that is the most important part of the city from our perspective, and this is how we started to understand that our role as designer should be. In contrast with the usual way of being, let's say the conventional way of being urban designers, it's like this idea of designing from an aerial point of view, designing focused on buildings, focused on objects placed in the urban environment, focused on infrastructures, focused, as I said, in the geometry, so what we can do in order to change the city we, we have, in order to improve it, in order we have such a huge amount of cities already built that we have, we have right now to start fixing them, start transforming them. So what we can do? We can do this. We can run away. As here. Or we can do something different, which is trying to change things, trying to make new things. I mean, this is the mad forum. I think we are in a forum of doers, of makers. We have to think, we have to talk, but we have to make. We have to approach the design of, of our cities, and we have to approach from a super practical perspective. As I said, you have to become in the new makers, the new doers of Asia for like a new generation of people making things, transforming things, changing things. From our perspective, we are focused. We usually work with these three ingredients. This is part of our research, but we are not researchers. We are designers that want to change the living environment. So we, even if we focus into ex quite experimental approaches to urban design, finally what we want to do is to transform the reality. So social, environment, and technology, these are the three main topics that underline our approach to urban issues and architecture design. Our professional research, as well as our teaching, focused on exploring new possibilities through technology to streamline processes on the relationship between people and their environment. Aiming to improve everyday life and social issues and promoting interdisciplinary cooperation in doing so. And how do we approach Also, this idea of confronting the Google Maps, the aerial point of view of the infrastructure, but focusing more on that part of the social connections. So that's why we are super interested in the digital world at the same time. It's like Google Maps versus Twitter Maps. Since we really think we can start looking at the internet as a public space, this is something that we are quite interested in. It's like for us, the digital layer that is on top of the existing layer is something quite interesting. We can think that, that the layer is extracting energy from, from the existing urban environment, or we can think of a start researching our project that can create connections between those two layers, the physical in which we live, we breathe, and the digital, that sometimes is working due to the huge amount of regulations we are facing in the physical space. The digital space right now, sometimes is working much 
better, in a more active way, more exciting way. So we try to promote that idea of creating projects that are in between both worlds, let's say kind of hybrid projects that can create connections in order to bring that energy in the digital sphere into the physical sphere. In order to change things from this kind of urban perspective in, in which we are, let's say, involved into focused more on this part of the urban living, We have implemented projects and run projects in many different places all over the world, like in different countries. And right now my partner, Belinda Tato, is gonna present you our vision through our work, through different projects we have involved in the last years. Okay, so as Jose was saying, we have done different things in different contexts, and uh, this is a summary of some of our projects and designs, and, and they are kind of categorized by, by topics that we re consider relevant and interesting for the quality of public space and quality of lifestyles. So the first topic would be designing responsive urban environments. So we've made uh, two projects uh, which have been very relevant in our career. The first one was an intervention in the suburbs of Madrid, and it was an intervention to create climatic comfort uh, in the public space because Madrid is very hot and dry during the summer and so forth and therefore it's quite uncomfortable. So we were creating this structure that is um, inspired in the traditional Asia, uh, Middle East um, architecture and there is these cooling towers in which the air comes into the tower, gets in contact with the water atomizer and therefore it becomes cooler and heavier and it creates a microclimate in the ground level. So the whole idea was in this kind of um, new neighborhood with very little identity and very little quality in the public space to create this kind of gathering spaces. So we built three of them and the cooling system was placed differently and these spaces have been used for many different um, purposes and uses by the community. The second project that I want to talk about is uh, an intervention for the, the international exhibition uh, in Shanghai in 2010. So the public space, even if the, if the motto of the exhibition was better cities, better lives, and the pavilions were all very amazing and you know, spectacular, the public space quality and the experience of queuing there for getting into the pavilions was extremely exhausting and, and very uncomfortable. So we were commissioned the public space for the Madrid Pavilion. So our first approach is like we really have to consider the climatic um, solutions, otherwise it will be uncomfortable and a nightmare. So we were working with the engineers and the whole idea was to create this kind of air breeze to make the humidity more uh, kind of easy to deal with. So the final solution was this element that has got three different layers and depending on the use and the climatic conditions, uh, it would respond differently to the, to the environment. The second topic that we are concerned about is raising environmental awareness. So we believe that we architects and urban designers, every time we operate in the city, we're making a kind of a statement and it should be the right one or, you know, towards sustainability. So this is two examples of our work. This is a kindergarten we created in the suburbs of Madrid. So the whole idea was not only to provide the building, that was the competition brief, but also a public space in front of it for, for people to socialize and mingle in, in, you know, in, the, in, in the afternoons after classes. But another important feature of the building was not only to deal with the energy, but also with the water. We have um, uh, important issues regarding water uh, uh, in the south of Europe. So it was important not only to reduce the consumption, but also to purify the used water and use it for uh, irrigation of the, of the whole park. So we are working with Microfight Lagoon and we wanted to make that a visible part of the project. So we created this Microfight Lagoon in front of the building as part of the landscape. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's purifying the water, uh, all the wastewater from the building for, for using it for the irrigation of the park. 
So this is how it looks. Here you can see how the microphytes are um, taller now. And, and it's a very popular area in this suburban area which has very little kind of personality on or quality, uh, quality public space. And this is another small project that we developed in the Netherlands. Uh, it's a, what we call an energy carousel. So it's a carousel for, it's a playground for the kids. So with the movement of the kids during the day, they're producing energy and the energy is stored in the batteries. So you, it's being used for the lighting during the evenings. So the whole idea is to kind of embed the, the environmental issues into every project we do, but trying to make it in a playful way. So the next topic is empowering community through network design. We've been, uh, over the last few years, we've been developing different kind of uh, engaging projects and engaging tools. And we're, as designers, for us, it is a challenge. How can we bring into our designs the community's voice? And these are some examples. This was a small action, a workshop in Exuma in the Bahamas. It's uh, an area which is very fragile because of the environmental conditions. And there is a land use planning that is taking place. So we were called as mediators in order to run these workshops and activities, working with the local community. So we run workshops in every primary school and also in the high schools to, to collect their ideas. So we were working with this dual red and blue for problems and opportunities. And doing these origami exercises and workshops, we finally created this um, garden of ideas. We also incorporate, as Jose was mentioning before, the digital into every project we do, and we will get into details about that later on. And this is another project we are currently engaged. It's a master plan for the historical center in Asuncion in Paraguay. So when we were going through the brief for the competition, we realized there's so many things already going there, going on. There's so many projects, there's so many initiatives, and somehow what was lacking was a kind of a management tool, an efficient management tool so that, that there could be an interface between government and the citizens because we believe that a city cannot be you know, uh, enhanced and improved if we are not engaging the citizens. So we understood that maybe our role was somehow to provide the knowledge and to, to make a kind of a database of all the good and best practices from all over the world and bring them to this kind of interface management office that we are creating, which is the ASU lab, and then getting all these experiences locally in, into Asuncion. So the whole idea in the competition was to create this database of both um, top-down uh, initiatives, sorry, top-down strategies and bottom-up initiatives. And trying to design a kind of a schedule or calendar of how all this could kind of come together for a better future, better planning for the next 20 or 25 years for the city of Asuncion. We like to say instead of a master plan, we are creating a master process because we understand this plan should actually be open enough to allocate and to, to allow changes over the years according to the circumstances. So these are some animations of how we understand this improvement and this development can be implemented in the stages and how this will be a main, making an impact in the, in, in the city. But then getting into kind of very detailed things uh, in parallel with this kind of you know, planning that we are developing in, in Madrid, we're also carrying out um, some workshops with the primary schools there and with the university. And this is the outcome of one of the workshops with the university. So after brainstorming with the students, they realized that one of the most kind of low cost action, but still very important for the city, would be to create this bike path. So they got into action and in one night they created this bike path uh, all over the city. So the next morning it was on, in all the media because uh, you know, the government has been promising this for years and they, they just decided they got the paint and they did it. And they were very proud of that and, 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 and it was very important to see, you know, to empower the people to realize that they, they really have the power to do things. And the last project we're going to talk about uh, within that category is, is this competition. Uh, this was a competition for a city, Hammar in Norway. It was a competition launched as an art intervention. They were calling out for ideas to, to do an art installation in the main public space of the city. 
So we thought that instead of having a single mine or a single team working for it, it would be more interesting to have a community-based uh, uh, idea. So this is the video we submitted for the competition. So instead of having one square, that was the kind of the call for the competition, we said our proposal was to provide 1,000 square, and that was the 1,000 ideas that we wanted to gather from the community. the local citizens but also to engage the global community because today we do have the tools to make that possible so it was more about launching a whole creative process about this public space what it meant and what, what people's dreams were for it and try to you know to, to help them in, in that process and, and actually deliver a final product a final design for it and there was a um, you know, um, conversation, but we ended up doing this, this kind of process in which uh, we, we delivered different kind of tools. Uh, the first one was an uh, academic network. We created this network with different institutions all over Europe who were studying Stuttgart, which is the main square as their case study. We did these urban actions that are low cost, low tech, but fast actions into the public space to show the citizens that the space could be used in a different way. We had the physical lab, which was our working space, exhibition space, and so on. And we had the, um, the digital lab, which was uh, also a, ser a series of activities on the digital sphere in order to engage this global creative community. And we also had the cultural rucksack, which was a way of uh, engaging the, um, the local kids, the teenagers, into the design process. So there was 1,300 kids from the community making proposals for the square. So these are, these are some images of the physical lab, the digital activities, the urban actions, and uh, contribution from the kids. So the whole challenge was afterwards to put together and to kind of uh, synthesize all these ideas into a design. So we managed to do so after a lot of suffering, of course. As designers, we always suffer. But we're very happy to share with you that um, um, it was it's been opened uh, in the last few months, uh, and, and, and this, what we call the social ring, which is a skating ring in the winter, has become very, very popular. So we're going to watch a, a very short video. We were invited to be part of the Architecture Biennale in Venice, and we produced this video, and we had a very limited budget for producing the video, so it was very, it's, it's very challenging when you have to, to synthesize all the ideas and all the, all the processes, and we hope this is clearer than my explanation even. Dream Your City. Sounds interesting, but what does it really mean? Dream Your City is an innovative way of transforming urban spaces by setting up conditions that stimulate a public debate and generate new ideas, and by connecting local citizens to professional and academic networks worldwide. Is this just another utopian dream? Has anyone tried it yet? Yes, we recently used Dream Your City in Norway, where we redesigned the main town square of Hamar. We launched Dream Hamar with these tools. The Physical Lab, an on-site meeting place used for various events. Its open door policy made it a perfect spot to listen and be listened to. Urban Actions, public events on the square during which citizens could experience and test ideas at their real scale. The Academic Network, allowing over 1,500 students and faculty from various local schools and international institutions to become part of the design process. And finally, in order to connect Dream Hamar to the world, we built the Digital Lab, where creative people from all over the world could contribute their ideas and interact with others. Outputs from all these spheres of activity helped to shape the new urban design concept for the square. So why Dream Your City? Why not? It builds resilient and proactive communities and allows for the creation of more inclusive and meaningful designs. 
Just dream about the possibilities and contact ecosistemaurbano.org. Okay, and the last part, um, as, as we mentioned at the beginning, we are designers, but we are trying to test, trying to develop new tools in order to, to incorporate citizens into our design processes. And we think if we, if, if, if we fail into that, we will not be very good designers. But uh, we've been doing some tests, and I think some of the ideas are very interesting. Uh, today, with the digital tools, we really can create this conversation and be quite efficient. So this is a, a, a tool that we have designed, it's called Local In, and it's a very intuitive and user-friendly way of incorporating ideas into a, a website or, or app. So we have, uh, and the whole idea is to, again, to, you can write a post, you can write a message, you can upload a picture, but you can georeference it, which makes it very easy to, to, understood, to, to understand when you actually want to, to make a visualization. So we ca have created the local in um, platform for, for the city of Hong Kong because we've been running over the last few days a workshop at Hong Kong Design Institute and we will see how it looks like. So this is the QR code if you want to log in and this is the, or the website. So the platform is open and will remain open forever. So if you want to keep it open for your own conversations, then that's, that's fine, that's perfect and we encourage you to do it. So, this is some visualization of how it looks, and you can either go and view the messages uh, posted by others, or you can participate creating your own profile. So we're always playing with the blue for the ideas, for, for the possibilities, for the potentials of the city, and the red for the challenges, the problems, the things that are unsolved. This is how you visualize it, so you, know, the, uh, you can see the both differences, and you can categorize your post by different tags, and you can also visualize it as a word cloud, uh, so you can see what are the topics which are more relevant within the community. So it's a very user-friendly platform, it's very intuitive, and we hope you can, you can continue using it. So this is a quick installation that we did at HKDI the, the other day. So it was a physical installation of the digital platform, and it was a balloon installation, always playing with the blue and the red. And uh, it was very nice to see how the students um, use the markers to write their ideas. So it became a kind of a ideas garden that uh, not only the students at the school, but also the passersby were watching, playing with, taking selfies of every single idea. So it was, it was very much fun. So now we have these few more minutes, I think exactly seven minutes to get into action. So you have been given a, a balloon. Uh, it could be red or blue. So that's what you are expected to, to do. You have to, to pair up with somebody uh, around you. If you have a blue, uh, you have to find a, a red person. And if you have a red, you have to find a blue. You have to discuss a positive and a negative issue of, of a city, of urban space, of public space. You have to write it down. You have to inflate it. And then we'll take uh, some pictures together of uh, the red and the and the blue ideas in the in the room. Okay. Okay. So. A little bit of action. As Belinda was saying, you have red and blue balloons. You have to discuss for three minutes your own positive and negative experiences, and then inflate the balloon and write on top in the blue one ideas for the future in the red one challenges of the present of public spaces. Okay. okay. So we have three minutes. Come on, discuss. Come on. <laughs> we are makers. <laughs> okay, so can everybody raise the red one? Come on, stand up. We're going to take a picture. Say cheese to the camera in your back. Only red ones. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay, now the blue ones. Much more ideas, very nice. One, two, three. Okay, now everybody. Red and blue. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Uh, one more thing. Last thing. What we have to do with the balloons, we have to go later, as soon as you leave the room, you have to go to the square, the main square in front of the theater, and you have to, there will be some structures, and you have to put your ideas, your balloons, attached to those structures, so everybody can read and share the ideas, okay? You can read the ideas of the others, okay? Thank you. And the last advice, this is the last advice for, for Matt, Mad men and mad women, women. Think big, start small, act now as soon as you leave the theater, okay? Thank you very much. Bye.